professor Savita Burke and today we are going to start with the ratio analysis. This chapter is having a weightage of 15 marks in the university. For writing each and every formula you are having 1 marks over there in case of the university. Usually they will ask you about the 7 to 8 formulas. In this chapter you are having total 12 formulas. So it's better that the student should remember all this 12 formulas and doing the computation with the help of these formulas is so much easy. Now we are going to discuss about the each and every ratio. Now the first one is your current ratio or it is also called as your working capital ratio. The formula for that is current assets divided by current liabilities and this ratio is expressed in the term of the pure ratio. What is meaning of pure ratio? Pure ratio means whatever will be the answer, you are just going to express that as it's to 1. For example, if your answer is 2, you are just going to write down is to 1. That is your pure ratio format. Now, from where you are going to get this amount of your current assets and current liabilities? I have written with the help of red pen over here that is BS. BS stands for your balance sheet or it is also called as your position statement. So in a question itself they will give you a ready made income statement as well as balance sheet. The income statement is nothing but your profit and loss account and the balance sheet is also called as your position statement. So from where you have to find out this amount of your current asset as well as current liability. You have to go directly to the end of your balance sheet. So if you will start from the last lines over here you will be able to see that they have given you the current liabilities and the amount of current assets is also over there. So whenever you want to solve this current ratio the formula is current assets divided by the current liabilities and amount easily you can find out and save your precious time in the examination that you have to just check out the position statement or the balance sheet directly you have to jump at the end over here and then here you can see something called as the current assets they will give you all the current assets majority of the times they will give you the total of current assets also they have given you over here the current liabilities and again majority of the times they will give you the total of your current liabilities also so current assets divided by current liabilities is nothing but your current ratio now the second one is debt equity ratio your formula your question itself is the answer it is simply debt divided by equity and for writing this formula again you are going to get the one marks so if they have asked you debt equity ratio the answer is simply debt divided by equity now again from where you are going to get this amounts that will be from the balance sheet and this ratio is again expressed as your pure ratio now again you have to go back to the your balance sheet or your position statement for current ratio you jump directly to the last of this end part of your balance sheet now for this debt to equity ratio you have to jump directly to the sources of fund or the start point of your balance sheet over here you will be able to see something called as the long term loans or borrowed funds this entire is nothing but your debt and the first point whatever they have given you that is shareholders funds it's include your share capital reserves and surplus preference shares profit and loss account positive balance all that will be your shareholders fund but now in an exam how to save your time directly you have to go to the balance sheet and you have to check out the first part that is sources of funds of your balance sheet then the point number B will be always your debt and point number A is your equity. Now the next one is proprietary ratio. 
the formula for that is proprietor's funds divided by total assets into 100 whenever it is into 100 your answer will come in the percentage again this amounts also you are going to get from your position statement or from your balance sheet now what is the meaning of your proprietor funds proprietor funds is nothing but again your equity and the total asset is going to include so many things again please pay attention over here proprietor fund means whatever you have included in your equity that is your proprietor's funds or the first part of your balance sheet is always your proprietor's funds now this you have to divide with the help of the total assets now in the total assets what will come all the second part of your balance sheet your application of funds is having fixed assets investment and your working capital so your total assets will include a three things that is fixed assets investment and current assets we are not going to include the liabilities so your total assets will have your fixed assets investment and your current assets now the next one is stock to working capital ratio again this is your balance sheet ratio and the formula is closing stock divided by working capital in 200 the amount is we have to express in a percentage because we are multiplying over here with the help of the 100 now from where you are going to get the amount of your stock and working capital from the balance sheet now over here the stock the amount of closing stock you will be able to find in your current assets or sometimes they will provide you this amount in the adjustments also now the working capital working capital is your current assets minus current liabilities so in this situation your working capital will be you are having current assets is of 6200 and the current liabilities is of rupees 2000 so you are having the working capital is of rupees 4200 this is so much easy they will give you each and everything in a question you just have to find out the amounts and you have to do the plus and minus in my next lecture we are going to solve the one sum based on the ratio analysis from your past university question paper so you will be able to understand that this chapter is not the scary but this is the scoring chapter now the next one is your gross profit ratio the formula for that is gross profit divided by net sales into 100 and the amount for this you are going to get from the income statement not from the balance sheet now in 200 so the answer will be in the percentage now if you want to compute this ratio you have to go to the income statement now you have to come down from the start on your second or third line usually you will be able to find out the amount of gross profit gross profit is simply sales minus cost of goods sold that is cogs you will get the gross profit so if you want to find out the gross profit you have to come in the downward direction in case of your income statement on the first or second line or the third line you will get this amount of gross profit easily now the next one is net profit ratio the formula for that is net profit after tax n pat stands for net profit after tax divided by net sales in 200 again this is in 200 means the answer the final answer you have to express in the percentage this is income statement ratio or your profit and loss statement ratio now from where you are going to get the amount of net profit after tax gross profit at the start you can find out the net profit will be the always the last line of your income statement only in case of the sums based with the adjustment will not have this this you have to compute in that sums but almost in the 60 to 70 percent cases go to the income statement just find out the last line if they have written you net profit after taxation that is your net profit after tax this amount you have to put up the sales amount is also itself given in your income statement in 200 and you can score the 
out of out marks in case of your ratio analysis with the help of this simple plus and minus. Now the next one is debtors turnover ratio. The formula for that is credit sales divided by average debtors plus average bills receivable. Now this credit sales you will get from the income statement and your debtors and bills receivable you will get from the balance sheet. Whatever is the answer you have to write down that in a number of times means for example if the answer is 5 so how you have to write down debtors turnover ratio is equal to the 5 times. So now we are going to see that from where you are going to get the credit sales. The credit sales they will give you in your income statement or they will give you instructions to compute your credit sales. But suppose in a question it if they have not given you something called as the credit sales then whatever is the amount of sales they have given you this amount only we are going to consider for the computation. Now the next one is your average debtors and average bills receivable. This amount you will be able to find out in your balance sheet. In a balance sheet you have to go to your current assets there you will be able to see the debtors as well as the average bills receivable here in this situation they have not given you the bill receivable so you have to put simply zero or nil in case of your computation now the next one is the debtors velocity or the debt collection period so for that the formula is means this debtors collection period you can compute in the terms of the days, months or in the weeks. If you want to compute in terms of the debt days then it will be 365 days divided by debtors turnover ratio or 12 months divided by debtors turnover ratio. If you want to compute in terms of the weeks then that will be 52 weeks divided by debtors turnover ratio. Whatever you are going to compute suppose you have computed debtors velocity in terms of the days then your final answer will be number of days only now the next one is creditors turnover ratio the formula for that is credit purchase divided by average creditors plus average bills payable and answer you have to write down in the number of times Again this both the amounts you will get from the income statement as well as from the balance sheet. Now the next one is creditors velocity or credit payment period. The formula for your debtors velocity and creditors velocity is almost same only what you have to do. If you are going to remember this formula instead of the debtors you have to just put the creditors over here. So this is so much easy. To remember now the next one is operating ratio for that the formula is cost of goods sold plus your operating expenses divided by net sales into 100 now all this amounts you will get from your income statement if you will go to your income statement they will give you a cost of goods sold as well as the operating expenses and they have itself given you a net sales now the next one is selling and distribution expense ratio the formula for that is selling and distribution expense divided by net sales in 200 this amount also you are going to get from your income statement so students just please remember that in case of the ratio analysis you have to remember all this 12 formulas out of this 12 formulas they will ask any 7 to 8 formulas in an examination so for writing the 7 to 8 formulas you are going to get 7 to 8 marks and if you are able to identify this amounts correctly and if you are able to do this division and multiplication accurately 15 out of 15 marks is yours. In the next lecture I am going to solve the first sum of your ratio analysis. So you guys will be the more confident and you will be able to solve the ratio analysis accurately. Thank you so much.